In this demonstration, I'm going to take you through the lab to show you how to calculate the empirical of uh, copper sulfide. Now, we're doing magnesium and oxygen, but uh, I just want to demo every single calculation out for the uh, copper sulfide. So, uh, copper sulfide. is an ionic compound. Copper is located in the transition metals and sulfur is in group seven, uh, group six of the periodic table. And if copper one sulfide forms from this chemical reaction, the empirical formula or a simple formula should be copper with a two and sulfur. However, if copper two sulfide forms, The copper is going to be in the plus two oxidation state, and sulfur is going to be minus two, so we don't have to crisscross here. We know one of each is going to come together, so that's going to be uh, CUS, so that's called copper two sulfide. Now, with today's technology, we could just Google or look up the information and see what they did, but back in the day, they didn't know what the formula would be. They had to do a chemical experiment and figure out things, okay? so. If, uh, for example, this is the formula, um, we would expect one mole of copper to combine with one mole of sulfur. Um, since the atomic weight of copper and sulfur are 63.546 and 32.06 respectively, we would expect uh, about 63 grams of copper to react with uh, 32 grams of sulfur. Now that's a huge amount of material. We're gonna do this on a much smaller scale. Let's go ahead and start the experiment. So I just want to emphasize this is not the lab, um, this is just a demonstration. So don't worry about writing numbers down. I'm going to write the numbers down and do every single calculation for this lab. But um, let me grab a pen. First what we want to do is weigh our reaction vessel. It's called a crucible and a crucible lid. I'm going to jot this down here on the board. crucible and the lid. Now copper is a uh, nice colored element. As you know from your copper pennies, it comes in foil, wire, and uh, I'm going to be reacting this small piece of copper wire. I'm going to uh, kind of just wind this up a little bit so it fits in the crucible. So that's the mass of the crucible, the lid, and the copper. By difference, I can figure out the mass of the copper and I can know the moles of the copper. Sulfur. Is a uh, yellow colored element. I'm not sure if that shows up very well on the camera. Now we want to add some uh, sulfur to the same crucible. Now in this experiment, the uh, sulfur is going to react with the um, copper and form one of those two products I mentioned earlier. And the excess sulfur is going to be heated with a flame and it can burn and combine with the oxygen. And sulfur dioxide uh, is a gas, so it can be easily be removed from um, the crucible. And of course, I have this in the fume hood because sulfur dioxide has this choking smell to it. So before we do the reaction, I need to write down the mass here. Um, this mass we don't even need. I don't know why I'm writing this down. Anyways, I'll write down that. Uh, now let's go ahead and set up the uh, apparatus here. Mm -hmm. 
when the fume hood runs, it'll be quite loud, so um, I won't be talking any during the video. All right, let's fire up the fume hood. And I'm supposed to raise the lid every five minutes just to make sure there's no more sulfur, and then uh, reaction will be over after then. I'll show you what it looks like when it's burning. Now that we have this uh, crucible sufficiently cooled to room temperature, we can safely handle it. And we'll go ahead and uh, measure the mass here. Irene can still be pretty hot, but the crucible should be okay. And there's no more sulfur on the lid. Or in there, so. 
feels warm to the touch. So I'm just gonna hold this with my hands, which is not the best thing to do, because that might transfer fingerprints to it, cause it to be erroneously high in weight. So I'm gonna write this uh, number down here. So that's the mass of copper sulfide. Whether it's copper one sulfide or copper two sulfide, we have to now calculate. That was the first time I've actually done that reaction. Uh, sulfur can cause uh, very strong allergies with some people, so that's why we never do this lab. But um, I've, uh, this is the first time I've did it. It's kind of enjoyable. Um, so here's the data. You need your periodic table and the calculator, and let me show you how to do this. First, we need to calculate the grams of copper that's in our sample. And to do that, we take the mass of the uh, copper and the crucible, and we subtract the mass of the empty crucible. Now, this is the way you want to show the math. You want to show um, every number having a digit. You want to have an equal sign, a number, a unit, and the chemical, okay? Don't just write grams, because you might get confused. Is that copper, the crucible, the sulfur, the what? So, uh, grams, copper. Step two, we want to calculate the grams of the sulfur, and we can do that by taking the mass of the crucible and our product and subtracting the mass of the crucible and the copper, right? Because the only difference between these two is the amount of sulfur that has chemically bonded to the copper. And I'll just do that in my head, but this is 0 0.20 grams of the sulfur. Now we want to find the subscripts in our chemical formula, so we need to find moles. Step three, let's find the moles of copper. So you use the average atomic mass for copper. And uh, it's 63,546. And uh, grams of copper cancels and we'll be left with moles of copper. Um, we, we won't um, round this off just yet. We'll keep a few extra digits, all right? Uh, let me set up, um, since I'm holding this, the setup for uh, same thing, but for moles of sulfur. So for moles of sulfur, we want to use that number. And 32.06 is the average atomic mass of sulfur. So grab your calculator and we'll compute this out. Now this has two sig figs. If this were a final answer in any of my calculations, I'd round this to two sig figs, but I'm gonna keep it four sig figs. I don't wanna have rounding errors before I get to my final result. The units there are moles copper. Same thing here. So we're not rounding those just yet. Step five, we need to just look at these and just by examination figure out which one is the smallest. It's this one here. And we want to divide both of these quantities by that smallest number. So copper, we are going to take this number
Now the elements don't cancel, but moles does. So you just need to remember what, what you're doing. So that's why I put copper out here just as a note. And so we'll get that here. Well, let's do sulfur as well. And you can see if you divide it by itself, it's just gonna be one. All right, so let's, let's do that math now here. Now we're looking for small round whole numbers uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, some, something like that. And I'm getting uh, 1.7022, uh, something on my calculator, okay? So at this point, you need to make a decision. If that's really close to 1.5, like 1.4999, something like that, you could round it off to um, 1.5, multiply both coefficients by two, that would become three, that would become two, so your formula would be Cu3s2. Um, I'm just gonna round this to the nearest whole number. I suggest you do the same in your lab. So if it's 1.1, round it to one. If it's 1.8, round it to two. This is 1.7. We know atoms come only in whole number amounts. So step six, I'm running out of space here. Step six, we need to round these off to the whole number. So you can see why I did not do that in steps three and four. 1.7 is about two. One is, you know, one. And so the formula is going to be Cu2s. That is my final answer that I'm trying to find for this lab. The name of that would be um, copper 1 sulfide. Whether it's correct or not, don't worry so much about it. Uh, it's, it's mainly the adventure. Life's an adventure, not a destination that uh, matters the most. So that's how you do the calculation.